March was full of Windows news, despite the lack of Windows-related activity at Ignite. Microsoft officially announced Windows Server 2022. There are some interesting UI updates coming for the Sun Valley feature update for Windows 10. That's due in fall this year. Virtual desktops are getting support for customized desktop backgrounds. The Power Automate desktop app is now available as a free download for Windows 10 users. And Windows Server is getting support for hot patching in preview, but there's a catch. So keep watching for all the details and much more. I'm going to be covering all the biggest Windows and Microsoft news stories on this channel. So if you'd like to stay up to date with all the upcoming changes to future versions of Windows, the biggest news stories from Microsoft conferences and press events, and news from the Windows ecosystem and Microsoft's partners, then make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon and set it to all notifications to make sure that you don't miss out. And don't forget to like the video if you find it useful and leave me a comment below if you want me to cover any of today's stories in more depth. So let's start with the first piece of news and that's the official announcement of Windows Server 2022. Now there have been a couple of preview builds available of Windows Server prior to this announcement, but the announcement at Ignite is that the first official word that we've got from Microsoft about this new version of Windows Server on the long-term servicing channel. Now remember that the Long-term servicing channel is the one that gets the desktop experience as part of the package and of course a much longer period of support. This release is going to include all of the features that are part of Windows Server on the semi-annual channel. So with this release we're going to get things like improved containerization support, AES 256 encryption for server message block, so that's the protocol that's used for file sharing. And we've also got TLS 1.3 encryption in this version of Windows Server as well. And to help prevent firmware attacks, Microsoft is now making Windows Server part of its secured core program. Now Windows 10 is already part of that, and this is a partnership with hardware manufacturers to make sure that firmware is protected from the initial boot up, so when hardware is dealing with the booting of Windows, right through to when the operating system starts running. And of course, this is because firmware attacks have become much more prevalent in the last few years. So while I'm on the subject of Windows Server, let's talk a little bit about hot patching. Now you're not dreaming, this is hot patching and Windows Server. So this is a feature that's been available in Linux for years and years, and Microsoft is now making Windows Server Azure Edition part of the auto-managed feature that's also part of its cloud platform Azure. Now what you'll be able to do with this is you'll be able to run and patch Windows Server for up to three months at a time without having to reboot it. Now this only applies to security patches. So how it's gonna work is that every three months, Microsoft is going to release a cumulative baseline update, which you will have to apply to your Windows servers. And this includes not just security patches but everything that's released in the standard cumulative updates for Windows Server and Windows 10 of course. And for three months after that Microsoft will release security patches which you will be able to apply to Windows Server without having to reboot it. Or probably it's more accurate to say that the Azure Cloud auto-managed service will apply those patches for you. Now the big catch here is this only applies to Windows Server Azure Edition. It doesn't apply to any other versions of Windows Server that you have running in the cloud, so you can't apply this to existing virtual machines that you've got deployed. You can't use it with your on-premises Windows Server. So despite those restrictions, this is definitely a move in the right direction, and it's something that I know a lot of system administrators have been waiting for for years and years. And of course, this is going to improve the uptime for your servers because you can keep them running for longer without having to reboot them. Microsoft announced this month that it was making its Power Automate desktop 
application available free for Windows 10 users. Now this is an application that you install on Windows 10 and basically it has something like 370 built-in actions or Microsoft calls them flows that allows you to automate tasks between different desktop applications. Microsoft are also going to make this an inbox application as part of Windows 10 in a future update. But you can download it now manually for Windows 10 and I'll put the link in the description below. Windows 10 X, which is the stripped down version of Windows 10 that's intended for, at least at the moment, single screen, low cost PCs that are aimed at the enterprise and education markets has been delayed now until the second part of 2021. Originally, we were expecting devices with Windows 10 X to start appearing around now. Now, there was a what we thought was going to be a final build of Windows 10 X that eventually didn't get signed off by Microsoft. We're expecting the final build to be signed off sometime this spring. And Microsoft says that it wants to delay this release to make sure that users have a smooth experience with the new version of the operating system when it's finally released in the second half of this year. And speaking Speaking of Windows updates, the Windows 10 21 H1 update, which is a very minor update, there are just a very few changes for enterprises in this update, has now gone into pre-validation testing. So if you're an organization that wants to test this update, and I think it should reach general availability sometime in May or maybe early June this year, if you want to validate this new update, you can do that and you can get support from Microsoft if you choose to test it with some of your users. Of course, it's not something that you should be rolling out to all of your users at the moment. It is available through the usual channels. You can download it as an ISO file or you can get it via Windows Update. But this is something you should look at testing for small groups of users so that when it becomes generally available, you can roll it out with confidence. Project Reunion uh, version 0.5, are they why they just didn't go with version one, is now generally available. It's supported in production. And this is a new platform for developers that brings together the features of modern Windows 10 apps or the universal Windows platform platform apps as they are sometimes called with the what was once referred to by Microsoft as the legacy Win32 uh, API which clearly is no longer a legacy as far as Microsoft is concerned. So basically what this now allows developers to do is to deploy Windows applications using the kind of uh, platforms uh, that were familiar to them like .NET and WinUI stuff like that but still be able to to use those modern features without having to develop an actual UWP app. So it brings all of those things together. Now, as I understand, Project Reunion is going to be updated independently of Windows. So as new features are added, developers are not going to have to wait maybe one or two years while organizations or users upgrade their devices. All this is going to be rolled out so that developers can start using new features that Microsoft adds as quickly as possible. So that's great news for everybody all around. Now, I've talked about Windows virtual desktops on this channel before, and there's even a dedicated video about how to use them and why you might want to use them. And Microsoft hasn't really developed this feature for several years now. It kind of added it to one of the feature updates many years ago now and kind of left it. But there have been a few tweaks coming in previous updates uh, to Windows 10 and probably will be added to the big feature update that's coming in the second half of this year. It will be now possible to reorder your virtual desktops in the task view and it will be possible to set a customized desktop wallpaper for each virtual desktop. So it'll be easier for you to identify which virtual desktop that you're actually working on. And I know that's going to make a lot of people very happy. And that feature is currently available in Windows Insider Preview Build 21337 and that was released on the dev channel. Some other news this month which is also for Windows Insider on the dev channel. It's build uh, 21. 
343 is that Microsoft is making some container improvements to Windows Sandbox and Windows Defender Application Guard, which will make it faster to start up applications. So Windows Sandbox is a Windows image that allows you to experiment with things that you don't want to install on your main device. Maybe you're afraid that there might be some malware in there, or you just want to test some software and you just don't want to install it on your actual device. You can use Windows Sandbox to do that. Windows Defender Application Guard is compatible with Microsoft Edge, so the browser and the Microsoft Office desktop suite of applications. So you can run those applications in a sandbox and it just helps to protect your device from potential malware. So you can run those applications and even if you open an Office document, for instance, that did contain malware and it executed, it will protect Windows from any malicious code. So because they use containerization, those features to start, Microsoft is improving that technology so that your applications that are protected by, for instance, Windows Defender Application Guard will start up much faster now. And that will hopefully again be in the Windows 10 feature update that's coming later this year. Now, I know that a lot of you will be interested in the UI changes that are coming to the Sun Valley feature update for Windows 10. So there are a couple of things that are happening there. And again, all these things have come to various builds in the dev channel for Windows Insider. And the first thing is that the news and interest flyout, which was added maybe a few months ago now, is getting some changes. And the main one is that you can now see the rounded corners on each of the tiles in that flyout. And it's reported that in the Sun Valley update that's coming later this year, Microsoft is going to be focused on bringing those rounded edges to Windows 10 to bring a more modern feel to the desktop. And build 21.327 also gets lots of updates to the system icons in Windows. So you're getting a new feel and they're being updated to match the Microsoft Fluent Design language. Microsoft is also updating File Explorer in Insider Builds. So now there's a new default padding where everything is a little bit more spaced out. Now, users will be able to choose to go back to the kind of more condensed layout if they like. There will be the option for that. But the new padding is just giving a more readable feel to File Explorer and also hopefully making it look a little bit more modern. And inside the build 21343 also gets new icons in File Explorer. As you can see, there are bigger, more colorful icons again, hopefully to give File Explorer a more modern look as part of the Sun Valley feature update. And lastly, this month, Microsoft released Edge 89. Now, there's not a lot to say about this release other than Sleeping Tabs is now finally available for everybody with this release. So Sleeping Tabs go well to sleep in the background when you're not using them. And as soon as you're ready to wake up the tab, you just click on it and it wakes instantly. There's no delay at all. And this is designed to help save system resources and of course just make your computer run better. Uh, if you have you know, a huge amount of tabs open at any one time, this is a great feature. Vertical tabs are also now available for everybody in this release. So if you want to switch to your tabs running vertically down the side instead of horizontally along the top, you can now do that in this release. And I know that Microsoft is looking to improve vertical tabs in some upcoming inside the builds of the Edge browser. We also get Startup Boost enabled for everybody in this build. Uh, Microsoft says that this can improve startup times by up to 41% and it basically works by keeping the browser running in the background all of the time even when you close it down. In this build we also get intensive resources throttling which works by prioritizing the active tab and throttling JavaScript in any tabs that are not currently active again to try and help reduce resources but it doesn't affect other background processes for instance if you're downloading something or listening to music Music, those processes remain untouched. So that's it for this month. If you like the video and found it useful, then please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on next month's news update. And if you'd like me to cover any of the news in more depth, then please feel free to leave me a comment below. 
And there are some more videos on the screen now that you might also find useful from this channel. And that's it from me for today, and I'll see you next time.